Hi guys, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, so this had had been requested from one of you guys. How I got arrested. So back in sometime in June, he had gotten arrested, and he was only in there for a few hours. And I remember this day perfectly Probably from my ex. He was telling me that um, there are there's a man that's parked in a black van or a black car SUV and he's watching you he's looking for you he's watching your every move stuff like that and so you know I was getting I was kind of paranoid and I was like no it's not gonna happen After he had gotten arrested I was very paranoid I was very nervous I was having panic attacks now when I have panic attacks I shake badly I cry Something had happened. A family member of mine died. Died uh, in 2016. My mom and my brother were in a predicament. I had went with my ex to watch my brother, and I remember just having a panic attack. I've had several. It involved a panic attack. It involved an anxiety attack. It involved everything. June 26th, I had spent the entire day cleaning the house. My ex was asleep, drunk. I had taken a bath. I cut my hair because I, I was getting really tired of it. It was getting so long, so I cut it. I had it about maybe there. I had went to bed. The next morning, I was pretty much naked because I, after I had gotten out of the shower or bath, I dried off and then got into bed and went to bed. And I was like, I'm like tapping him. Someone ringing the bell. And so he goes out to the door. He, he peeks out and he's like, oh, there's a cop here. Get dressed. Like, get dressed. There's a cop. And I just put whatever I had on, put on my shoes, walked out to the door. And he's letting the cop in. The cop comes in. The cop came in and he was talking to me. It was really nice and stuff. And he was like, yeah, are you so-and-so? And I'm like, yes, I am. I am talking to me and I'm scared. Like, I'm like freaking out. And he was like, you know, um, I'm waiting on a warrant. Um, cause he didn't have a warrant with him when he came. He just knew of the warrant. And he was like, you know, if they tell me that I don't have a warrant, you're, you'll be, you'll be fine. I'll leave. Whatever. And we're waiting there for about an hour. Half hour to an hour. He goes, while we're waiting on this, um, warrant, would you mind going to the police station and, you know, so I can talk to you, ask some questions, whatever. I was like, yeah, sure, that's fine. So I get into his car, front seat of his car, we drive to the police station, okay? Now, he sits me in this room, the, you know, interrogation, maybe not that small, but it's, it was a pretty small room, basically telling me all my rights and stuff, and he was like, well, you do have a warrant, so I am going to have to take you to jail. And I was bawling, I was crying, I was telling him, you know, I didn't do it, I didn't do this, I did not do this, I didn't do it because I wanted to I was forced I'm like you guys were looking for this guy looking for this person this is who this is he has done this to me done it to many people they had picked me up they had came and got me around 10 30. by the time I got to the police station the actual jail it was three or I didn't get put into where I was till five and after the cop talks to me he takes me out into the where, where the offices are and he had the lady who was working with him look up a picture of this person they showed me and they were like is this the person you're talking about I said yes I said that is him and so they printed out the paper and they're like t looking it over or whatever and mind you I'm still scared I'm crying I asked them I was like can I please get a hold of my mom and they were like you know we'll have to wait and then they tried to get a hold of my mother and the place that they called she wasn't there that day before I had left, before I left, I told my ex to get a hold of my mother. After we had got done talking, he we get back into his car. He drives me to the police station. Again, I'm not handcuffed. I'm willing. I'm going willingly. So we go to the jail. And, you know, I'm going through the strip search and I'm squatting cough. Uh, luckily, I was by myself, okay? And they put me in this pretty good sized room with the toilet and it was open they could see inside of it and you know I'm in there for what feels like forever I'm in there maybe an hour or two 
after a while they called me back out to take a picture they were waiting on some other people to come back from court by this point i was already in stripes i was already you know wearing the shoes and everything the way the jail was set up okay you go in through all these doors they take you down this hallway and like there's this big room with uh, that's to the outside but not really it's this big room where you can see the sky and you can you know the sun hits you whatever and then you keep going through there's a door here a big room and then there's a door here followed by two other doors inside of it and those were the women's side and on the other side was the men's side so I'm walking in and everybody's like greeting her and like blah 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 and then they see me right at this point I'm carrying in my bed I'm carrying in the sheet I'm carrying in the blanket I'm just carrying in the entire bed okay and the bed paddings are about this thick okay they're about that thick they're not really that thick so you don't get much padding there you know I'm in there and I'm all talking to them and I couldn't find a place to sleep and so people were like oh yeah you know you can sleep here and then the place that I had chosen wasn't comfortable and so the girl beside me was like here take this you know this person doesn't sleep here anymore so and so doesn't sleep here anymore she, they call her the bed hopper she doesn't stay in the one bed for long and mind you this is the person they're talking about the person that they're talking about is the is the lady that came in with me sometime after me I get into this bed and it's a boat okay the boats are so freaking comfortable they are so fucking comfortable gotten ready and I laid down I went to lay down in the bed and the woman comes over and she's like she's like who is this bitch and why is she in my bed so I'm like I got up I'm like I'm like oh my god I don't want to get my ass kicked first night here I'm like I got up and I walked to, and I grabbed all my stuff and I walked away Plus, I had a cup, a, tooth, a toothbrush, everything else like that. So, anyway, I get up, and I try to find somewhere else to sleep. And I remember I had made a few friends there. Um, these three women, and I had, been, I had made really good friends with these ladies. The first week I was there, I cried the entire time. Me and my ex was writing letters back and forth. And, you know, that Friday, the first week I was there, that Friday, they had came to visit me. My brother, my mom, and my ex came to visit me. And, you know, I was crying in tears. My mom gave me all these numbers. My mom gave me these numbers. I was freaking the fuck out. I'm like, please. I'm like writing down everything I'm doing in jail. Like, everything. The two ladies that I had met were leaving. And it made me sad. I didn't want them to leave. Bear in mind, I was 19 when I got arrested. The whole time I was in jail, I was having teeth problems. I was not snacking. I did not have sugar. The only time I did was sometimes, you know, during um, lunch and dinner with, with the Kool-Aid. The Kool-Aid, everybody was like, oh, the Kool-Aid's half sugar. Yes, I get that. That is, it is mostly sugar. I understand that. But you don't understand when they do it, when they make it in jail, they don't make it sugary. I'm going to say that now. It's bland. But anyway, so by the time I had left jail, I, was, I lost a lot of weight. Now, the second presentation rolls around and I had my hair cut. I had previously dyed it too. So I had just dyed it black. And it was like jet black and I had had it cut and styled because there was a girl that did cosmetology. There was a woman that did cosmetology and had her own beauty shop, whatever. And she was in jail and she had done my hair. Because I was being let know, I was being let know about my case, my court case, whatever, when I was getting ready to get out, arraigned, whatever. I was getting arraigned that Friday. I was getting arraigned that 15th of July. So that Friday which was supposed to be the day I had visitors. And they had called me that morning, and I was like, oh my God, I was crying so bad. I just wanted to go home. And by the time I had waited, me and this girl, there's going to be a story time about this bitch. This bit, oh my God. Ooh. Anyway, me and her and her husband or whatever, we had went 
to get arranged and you know it was video it was by video i didn't have to go into court i didn't have to do anything so we're there we're waiting i'm packing up my shit i'm giving my shit away i'm giving my bed away whatever and i'm waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and by the time we got out it was five o'clock i think and the court the, uh, the courthouse closed at like six or something seven and they had let us out, and we finally, you know, got to go to the courthouse. And my family was sitting outside to, like, in front of the um, jailhouse. Or inside, of, like, outside of the jail. And they were waiting for me to come out. But they didn't know, and neither did I, that I was getting um, let go at the courthouse. Because I had to go sign papers. So I get there, and I'm finally free. I go and I sign papers. They let us go. I'm free. I'm walking home, and I'm, like, asking somebody, I'm like, hey, can I use your phone? Like, can I use your phone to call my mother? Like, to call my family, figure out where everybody is. So I call them, and I'm like, hey, I call my mom, and I'm like, hey, I'm home, I'm coming home, I'm leaving. Like, I didn't bring anything from jail. There is a saying, if you bring home something from jail, then you're going back to jail. That's how it is. That's, like, but that's how it goes. If you leave something, you write on something, whatever, you're going back to jail. And so I never care. I never took home the pencil. I never took home all my papers. I threw them all away. Like, literally threw everything away. I got out. I went in June 27th. Got out July 15th. Um, crazy thing is, is two years later, who knew that two to three years later, I was going to have a son supposed to be born June 27th. He came July 9th. So... I think it's kind of crazy, but anyway, I'm going to go, um, I'm going to try to upload, um, this, my vlog and other things. I'm going to try to, um, get the other story times up tonight or get those made. If I can't, then I'll try to make them tomorrow, but I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I will see y'all in my vlog. Bye.